Welcome to another video about learning Norwegian. Today I'd like to talk about how you should interact with Norwegians, speaking Norwegian, of course. Um, I guess it's quite obvious that this is part of your language learning process. It's um, actually one of the two big blocks. One is studying with resources, reading, listening, and so on. And the other one should, of course, be uh, speaking Norwegian with somebody. Now, many people actually underestimate that. It might surprise you, but I hear quite often that people tell me something like, um, I've been studying Norwegian three years with Duolingo and your textbook and another app, and now I still haven't spoken to Norwegians yet. And that's a bit dangerous because subconsciously you're teaching yourself that speaking Norwegian is too difficult, you know? So at some point you need to get the courage and speak Norwegian to somebody. Now, who should you speak to? It could theoretically be anyone who is good at Norwegian, um, but it should not scare you too much. So many people defer that simply because they're too scared to speak to somebody. And I was talking in another video about my onion principle, about um, um, choosing somebody who scares you just a little bit. Okay, so if that's a teacher, hire a teacher. If it's a friend, go for a friend. Uh, at worst, uh, you speak only to yourself. I'll go back to that a bit later. You could also consider to, um, finding a tandem partner. That means somebody who wants to learn your first language and is willing to speak Norwegian to you in exchange. So 30 minutes you'll speak English or, or Spanish or Arabic, whatever is your first language, or a language that you're really good at, and 30 minutes you speak Norwegian, for example. It's quite effective. Um, there is an app called Hello Talk, which I find quite helpful. I'm not affiliated with them, um, but uh, you can find tandem partners there and you can also send recordings, which I find pretty cool if you don't dare to speak to anybody. Whoever you choose, make sure um, you talk about what are your expectations actually for the language learning process. Ideally, grammar should be no part of the sessions at all, or only a tiny part. Grammar is something you can read yourself, you can learn it from an online video course. Um, of course, if you don't understand something, you have a question about something, you might ask a Norwegian teacher, fine. But um, this should only be a tiny part of your speaking sessions. And uh, don't forget that if you don't work with a teacher, but like a normal native Norwegian, uh, they have no clue about the grammar. So you might be more confused than uh, before the lesson. English should be avoided, not at all costs, but of course, you will have to speak Norwegian, not about Norwegian. Um, I'm not dogmatic about that. I don't say you cannot speak English at all. Uh, sometimes, for example, for pronunciation practice, it's very beneficial if you get an explanation in English that is very precise, that you understand 100%. Um, but of course, in general, there is a risk. You start with an English explanation and then you continue small talk in English. That shouldn't happen. If you're partner, language partner, teacher has this tendency, you might consider installing some sort of penalty for it. For example, whenever they speak English, they have to invite you for a cup of coffee or something like that. When um, you come across a word that you don't understand, make sure don't translate it right away um, to, to English or don't have them translate it to English. Try to make them explain it in simple Norwegian first. Also, the same applies to you. When you don't know a word, don't just put the English word and speak in this weird mixture of Norwegian and English. Try to avoid it. Try to say it in a different way, okay? If you can, of course, there is limits. So don't spend 10 minutes on <laughs> finding one word. Um, Ideally, you get feedback on pronunciation. That's the one thing that you really need native speakers for, that you really need feedback on. The grammar you can study on your own without anybody. Uh, the fluency you can <laughs> at least theoretically acquire by, by talking to your teddy bear. But um, uh, the, 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 the feedback on pronunciation is really one thing where you need somebody. Um, if it scares you too much though, if it discourages you completely from speaking, then I would say tell them this honestly and say, you know, I feel so scared. That's such a big step that it would discourage me too much to get corrections. So I ask you like for the first four weeks, for example, of our sessions, please don't correct me on anything. 
you should at some point get feedback on your pronunciation. As I said, feedback on grammar mistakes is not that important. Surprisingly, uh, many teachers will be hesitant about that, but uh, research shows us that um, the effect of getting grammar corrections while speaking is relatively low. Um, who should you choose? As I said, can be anybody who is competent, meaning who is very good at Norwegian, native speaker, teacher, or even somebody who has learned it just by themselves. The formal qualification is less important. I've done many job interviews with Norwegian teachers in my language school. And of course, there is an advantage when you have studied uh, Scandinavian languages at university because you have some theoretical knowledge, but there is also the risk that you're, you have a too strict image of what a class uh, should look like and you're not flexible and pragmatic uh, enough to um, change course if it's necessary. So there is a dilemma, I would say, the formal qualification is not so important. What is more important is their ability to simplify and their willingness to speak like simple Norwegian that you can understand. When it's too difficult, it's going to be frustrating, you will not benefit. And of course, the last thing, often underrated, there should be a good personal relationship. Okay, you should be looking forward to meeting them again. Of course, it's not going to work if you say, oh my God, tomorrow at six, I have another Norwegian session. This is, yeah, of course, you should be happy just about meeting this, this person um, personally. Now, don't be too picky on the other side. I've recently seen a, t a student who took a demo lesson in German with one of our uh, teachers. And he told me afterwards that he wants to think about continuing for two months. I don't know why two months, but uh, he needs to consider now for two months. And it's also the fourth demo lesson he has taken. So he has been to three other language schools and has been trying and not been happy with the teachers. I was thinking to myself, um, instead of spending this enormous amount of time on finding the perfect German teacher, he might just have learned German in the meantime with a mediocre teacher, you know? So there is a there is a balance here. Also, don't be too stubborn. What I mean by this is if you have learned other languages before, if you have a very clear idea of how you want to learn a language um, and your teacher or your language partner suggests something else, be a little bit open. You might give it a try and see if it works. If it doesn't work, you can be honest and say in a nice way, hey, thanks for trying this, but honestly, I feel it's not really beneficial for me, but give it a try. What about group courses? Um, group courses are cool for regularity because it forces you like to go every Tuesday, five o'clock. Uh, they're cool for meeting other students. They are okay if you have issues studying grammar on your own. For everything else, they're a waste of time because you're not going to learn speaking. Uh, like if you're with 10 students and 10 students is not much, 45 minutes, half of the time the teacher is speaking, ideally you speak two minutes. That's already quite, optimistic, like two minutes out of 45 minutes, huge waste of time. Uh, also, it discourages you if you're afraid of speaking and you're sitting surrounded by other students who watch, watch you trying to make a sentence, it's not beneficial, okay? Um, language cafes can be an element, we do them ourselves, um, but uh, ideally over the long run, the very long run, you should also talk to native speakers. But if it feels too scary for you right now, then okay, you don't have to. Um, my challenge for today, find somebody, anybody, depending on your budget, can be a teacher, can be a friend, can be a colleague, can be a tandem partner on Hello Talk, anything. Find somebody, schedule a session for them to, um, to speak Norwegian. Um, explain your expectations to them. And if you don't dare that, if you say, no, I'm just way too scared to speak Norwegian to anybody, then please continue with the exercise I suggested in my last video, that is record yourself talking Norwegian one minute at least, if you can do it longer, without thinking of mistakes, okay? Don't, don't think beforehand, just put out the sentences as they, as they come um, and do that every day for the next 30 days. And one month from today, Already today, you put in your calendar, one month from today, I will schedule a session with somebody. And if even then you don't dare it, then the, least, the, the minimum thing you should do is send one of the recordings to somebody on Hello Talk and get feedback on it. Okay, please share in the comments what you chose, what you're going to do. If you have any questions as well, also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with your Norwegian learning friends, and I'll see you in the next video.